This morning's hearing, lessons from the IMF's bailout of Greece, will examine the International Monetary Fund's financial assistance to the country, one of the largest and most controversial rescues in the fund's history. Under normal access rules, the IMF had traditionally lent up to 200 percent of a country's quota per year. When the Eurozone crisis hit, the fund in 2010 approved an exceptional access program for Greece worth 30 billion euros, or 3,200 percent of quota, to supplement the Eurozone's own contribution of 80 billion euros. In 2012, the fund approved a second program worth over 2,000 percent of Greece's quota, with more than 18 billion euros in new money. Many observers, including on this committee, were critical of the fund's use of a so-called systemic exemption, which was created in order for Greece to tap exceptional access lending. This exemption claimed that potential spillover effects from a Greek meltdown compelled the fund to waive its requirement that a member's debt be sustainable with a high probability before the fund lent money. Thanks to pressure from Congress, the systemic exemption has since been repealed. But this shouldn't obscure the fact that the Greek bailout has made a mockery of other IMF lending rules, too, as findings from the IMF's own evaluation office have made clear. Despite receiving exceptional access, Greece remains mired in recession, with youth unemployment approaching 50 percent. The IMF likes to speak of the catalytic role its financing can play in borrowing countries. But in Greece, at least, the fund's resources have catalyzed nothing. Seven years after the IMF's first program, Greece's debt has worsened and is judged by the fund as downright unsustainable. Today, the Eurozone has set up its own bailout fund, the European Stability Mechanism, or ESM. It possesses more resources for just 19 Eurozone countries to borrow more to, to borrow than the IMF can deploy for the entire world. At the same time, Greek capacity remains as doubtful as ever, with falling rates of tax collection, government arrears to domestic firms, and even the prosecution of the former head of Greece's statistical office, something widely viewed as a politically motivated witch hunt. In light of these facts, it is shocking that the IMF is now considering a third bailout for the country as a junior partner to the ESM. No one, not even the Europeans, pretends that the fund's financial assistance is needed. Rather, it is meant to protect Eurozone politicians as they head to elections this year. It is common knowledge that the IMF's contribution would be symbolic. But if that is the case, the fund may be on its way to becoming a symbolic institution. So make no mistake, if the IMF goes forward with a third Greek bailout, it will suggest that the fund has learned little from past experience, that its role as a lender of last resort is in jeopardy, and that its decision making has been hopelessly politicized. The fund will have no one to blame but itself if congressional scrutiny of its activities tightens accordingly, including through future consideration of IMF governance reviews. As for those who claim that any IMF member, including Greece, retains at least some right to borrow, we should refer to the IMF's Articles of Agreement, which contain explicit provisions to limit loans or render a member ineligible to receive them. The articles stipulate that assistance shall be temporary and designed to meet balance of payments problems provided that there are adequate safeguards. I would submit that seven years and counting does not qualify as temporary, and that having the IMF and ESM hand money back and forth to each other is not the kind of balance of payments crisis that IMF members pay their quota for. As for adequate safeguards, Greece is the first and only advanced nation to ever default on the IMF. And last year's alleged wiretapping of IMF officials in Athens suggests that good faith agreements are unlikely. With the Eurozone attempting, as we speak, to force the IMF to water down its demands for debt relief, another safeguard is at risk of being made meaningless. In short, Nothing less than the fund's integrity and adherence to its foundational principles is at stake here. I look forward to our witnesses' testimony, and I thank them for their participation at this hearing. And I'll yield.